Hello, we have worked with arrays before. We've filled them in from the keyboard and we filled them in from text files. And now it's time to work with two arrays at the same time. And those we call parallel arrays. So let's start with this issue. Write a program in which you use two parallel arrays. The one must be called our friends and the other one our age. And fill these two arrays from a pre-prepared text file called friends.txt. Have buttons to display and sort the array. As a matter of fact, that should be the arrays. Test your program by predicting the results and comparing your prediction then with the actual result. Let's start by looking at the text file. Here's the text file that I've created. It's called Friends and you can see that it's a text document. If I double click on it, it opens in Notepad and it has inside a number of friends and ages and these are all separated by hashes. So you can see that's the number that I have in this file. The last element or the last line is Karen 18 and there's nothing down below. Looking at this text file, you can see why we are going to use two different arrays. I need an array to store strings for the first names of these friends. And I need a different array that can store numbers, the ages of each of these friends of mine. So we are going to use two arrays and they are going to run parallel. In other words, the index of the first element in the names array will be one and then the name will be Kalen. And while the index is 1 for my numbers array or my ages array, that value in position 1 will be 60. So the third position in both of the arrays, in the one case, will be Janus, and the second and the age will be 19. So this is the reasoning behind parallel arrays. So let's start. I've already placed three buttons on the screen, uh, on the form, a fill button, a display button and a sort button. Now you should be able to see that initially I will have to click the fill button otherwise my arrays are merely empty. My display arrays will then be able to, well, we must write it so that it displays the contents of the two arrays and sort can only be done or only be pressed after the arrays have been filled. So if I display the arrays initially unsorted I'll see what they look like then I sort them and then I display them again and there should be a difference. They should be arranged either according to uh, alphabetical order or according to age. So let's start by filling our arrays. So I've double clicked on that button and I want to start by creating the two arrays. And in this case, I'm going to use a global variable because these two arrays must be able to be used in all the different buttons and in any procedural function that I write myself. So there above implementation, I'm going to create my R friends, and that is an array one dot dot. Well, let's assume there could be up to 50 friends of string and R age, which would be an array of the same size one dot dot 50 of integer, because those would be the ages. And I want another variable, and that is the size variable, and that has to be an integer as well. And size will indicate how many elements in this array have been used. In order to read my array or fill up my array from the text file, I would need to have at least a text file, va file variable, tf colon text file. And I would probably need, well, what else? I don't know. So I'm programming on the fly while we're recording. So let's take it slowly and we can always come back and fix something. And then I want a variable, a, uh, a string variable, so let's call it text file string colon string. And as a matter of fact, let's make it text file str. It's a little bit shorter and less typing. So what I'm going to do is, right at the beginning, I'm going to get tf string from the keyboard. In other words, from the user. So tf string will be colon equal to input box. And I'll put in the rest. So I've completed it and I'm saying the text file string will be an input box and I want these prompts and I've put already the value of friends.txt as a default value into the input box. So this will end up giving me the name of the file that I'm going to use. 
Now we want to fill up the array from oh, the two arrays from a text file. But the procedure to do that will always be the same. So this might be a good candidate for a separate procedure that we merely call from the button. And we call it from the button and send into it as a parameter the TF string. And that procedure can then fill up the two arrays because they are global. That procedure will have access to it. And once it's done, it just leaves them. It doesn't send anything back because it has changed the global array. So let's start and write the name of that procedure. Let's call it fill up. But it will need a parameter in the name of the text file string value that we've just received. So I've written a call uh, line, a calling line or a call statement for our procedure, but we haven't written the procedure yet. So I know that that must always be done higher up in the program. And here I'm going to say procedure fill up and it needs a value. So a text file, let's make it a capital TF and that is a string that must come in and it needs a begin and an end. And you know by now that whenever I need a text file, I need a text file variable. Or whenever I read from a text file, I need a text file variable in the procedure that's going to use it. So let's call it my text file, colon text file. And I need a variable one line so that I can read that whole line. And that will be a string. And if we need other variables, we'll put them in as we go along. Let's begin by assigning the text file variable my tf to the variable that comes in as a parameter a tf then i reset the file my tf and now i start my loop while not end of file my tf do begin and end and what must it do it must read line read line from my tf one line and by now you know that we've that once we've read that line we must chop it up so I need a delimiting character I know that my delimiter in this uh, text file is a hash so I'm going to look for hash pause so hash pause must be an integer and hash pause will be is definitely going to be the position of the hash in one line and I'll write the rest of the code and then show you once I'm done so I've written the code for the procedure fill up and these are the variables I need uh, the text file variable the one line variable in order to read, read each line from the text file and of course hash pause the position of the hash in the string assign it reset it and make size the number of elements in the array I use initially zero I start my loop while not in the file read in one line first so one line contains the first line with two hashes find the position of the first hash increase size because it's now a good time to increase size because I have read something and because I've read something successfully and in other words it's not the end of the file I am going to have an element in my array so our friends in position size which is now one is copy everything from the line I've read up to just before the hash then delete from one line everything including the hash find the hash again because there's a hash right at the end and make size a string to int value of that last part of the string which is copied from the beginning to just before the hash and if we keep on doing this we are filling up two arrays at once remember right at the end to close your text file now, it won't help us or we won't be able to see whether we've filled up this array unless we can display it. So if I go to the display button, I've put in the following code here. So this is really simple. I need a variable, integer variable, and I run from one to size because size indicates how many of the elements I've filled up. And I print the age of each child. So it's a, these two are parallel arrays, our friends and our age, and the I is the one that links it. So that index when i is one it'll be the friend's age uh, from this array and the friend's name from that array and it they keep in sync when i becomes two it's the next friend's age and name so this merely displays them with a hash in between and let's see what happens if i run this program 
So there it is. I click on fill the arrays. It asks me for the text file. This now gets sent into my procedure as a parameter, but I don't see any result yet. Click on display arrays and suddenly that prints the array that has successfully been filled up. What is left to be done is the sort button for two arrays. When I sort, I will use the bubble sort procedure. Now you've done the bubble sort procedure, but we've only used it with a single array, not parallel arrays. So I've put the code down here and you can check that it's exactly the bubble sort that you know. Uh, I have an i, a j and a temporary variable. For i equals size down to 2 and for j equals 1 to i minus 1. That's the normal bubble sort method. And I check if my friends array in position j is less than my friends in position j plus 1, then I must swap the friends. So at the moment, I'm only sorting a single array. Of course, this will be great to sort the friends, but my arrays will not be in sync anymore. Let's run this and see what the result is of sorting only one of the two arrays. So originally I click on fill arrays, use that text file and display them and you can see 16 belongs to Kaylin and 17 belongs to Lauren and 19 belongs to Janice and these are beautifully correlated. That number belongs to this name and that number belongs to this name. Now if I sort only one of the two arrays then the other will not be sorted and therefore they will not be correlated anymore. The number in position i or 1 will not belong to the name in position 1. So let's sort them. At this stage I know I'm only sorting one of the arrays and display it again. Now look, so there's my result after having sorted the array. And you can see that my names are sorted but the ages are still in the original sequence. So now I've made a mess up and we must fix this. So how will we fix it? Well, we can sort on only one of the two arrays, either friends or the ages. So I've assumed that we are going to sort on friends here. And if one friend is larger than the other and needs to be swapped, then I must swap both the friend and the age. So I'll put in the code and show you in a moment. These three lines will swap the ages whenever the friends need to be swapped. So our decision up top there decides if one friend in position J must be swapped with friend in position J plus 1. But if that's true, we must swap the ages as well. So this is the parallel array. I need to swap both the, the friend array as well as the age array. And I'm doing that here. These three lines swap the age array and the three lines above it swap the friend array. Now let's run this again and see what the result is now. Click on fill array, use that text file, display them and look at what they look like. Now I sort them and if I display again, hopefully my little pairs of 16 and Kalen and 15 and Brett and 18 and Karen will still remain in tandem. So if I display that, I can see Renice was 17 and she is still 17. Nora is 15 and she was 15 and if I go down we look at Karen was 18 and Karen is still 18 so now I have parallel arrays two arrays and I'm storing different data types in them in other words the one is in this case a string array and the other one is an integer array but I sort them in tandem parallel to each other